What's up, everyone? Hey, NAD supplements. I use them. So many people use them. It has become a huge, huge, extraordinarily large industry. From the IV places that do the drips to the supplements that enhance your NAD to, well, promote mitochondrial function. Now, I'm not saying they don't work. I think we need more data, but we can go off of the data we have and see if it's worth it or not. Now, if you are getting results from NAD supplements, I suggest you keep taking them because science evolved. Trust the science. Trust the science. The science is settled. No, 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 no. Certain things we can say the science is, well, it's pretty conclusive, right? Like I'm pretty sure the earth is round and not flat. But, you know, we find out a lot of new things. A lot of new data comes out. Look at what we've gone through in the summit industry with even glutamine. Now people are getting sued for making muscle building claims when all we saw in the early 2000s were muscle building claims. So what is, um, what are NAD supplements and why am I saying this? Why am I even doing this? So the NAD hype is real. IV drips claiming to flood your cells with NAD, endless energy detox, detox. I know there's a musician in Nashville. I'm not going to name a name because, well, yeah, I'm not going to do that, but he gets crunk every weekend. Crunk, 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 crunk. Gets crunk, get drunk. For those of you who don't know what the hell crunk means, drugs, alcohol. Then he goes in on Monday and he gets an NAD to cleanse, to detox. But is it doing that? Is it activating his mitochondria? Is it activating that mitochondria to get him better? Well, let's look at science, right? Well, if it works for him, keep doing it, right? But here's the deal. <laughs> NAD can't even get into your mitochondria. I know that sounds crazy, but, it, it, but, but I'll, I'll go into that. But if it can't get there, if it can't get there, it can't do the one thing everybody thinks it does. That's powering your cellular engines to crank out ATP. That's the key word here, ATP. P, think ATP, think the main claims for creatine. So it's not my opinion. This isn't my opinion. This is strictly science. Biochemistry 101. And as someone who majored in marketing, I have no idea what the hell that, no, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. So NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It is a coenzyme found in every cell of your body, plays a crucial role, crucial role in redox reactions, carrying electrons from one reaction to the other is what that is. So it's like a shuttle bus for energy transfer. It moves electrons to keep your metabolism humming. Inside the mitochondria, NAD in the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain is critical in the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain or the ETC. That's the process that generates ATP. And that's the fuel that runs every single thing you do. ATP, think ATP. So if you don't have NAD, you don't have ATP. But here's where the marketing is a bit wild. It's being sold like they're filling up your tank. You take a pill, NAD floods your body, and suddenly, suddenly you're invincible. You're a superhero. Except, uh, and I've talked to many experts about this because I am so interested in mitochondria. It's kind of what I do, and I'll get into why. It can't enter your mitochondria. It can't enter it. It's a large and charged molecule. Not large and in charge. It's large and charged. The membrane is highly selective, the membrane of the mitochondria. There's no direct transporter that allows intact NAD to cross from cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix. So that's the inside of the mitochondria where ATP is made. This means that all that extra NAD floating around outside your mitochondria, it's not helping your cellular engines directly. The mitochondria have to make their own NAD internally using precursors and recycling pathways. This is why NAD itself orally is essentially useless. You heard me, essentially useless. Studies have shown that oral NAD gets broken down in the gut and bloodstream. What actually raises NAD, what can, is taking precursors like NR, this is nicotinamide riboside, or NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide. Following me? Which your body can convert into NAD, but even then the question remains. Is NAD availability 
even the limiting factor in energy production. So is NAD ever limiting? Probably not. Here's the kicker. There's no strong evidence that mitochondria are starved for NAD in healthy individuals. In fact, studies show that even in aging, where NAD levels decline systemically, mitochondrial function isn't rescued by just dumping in precursors. Study done in cell metabolism in 2016. When NAD drops, it's usually because of overactive enzymes like CD38 or PR, PARPs. Breaking it down, not because we aren't eating enough NAD. That's what happens. That's what happens. That's how it happens. Mitochondria are incredibly efficient at recycling NAD through redox reactions. They aren't sitting around waiting for a capsule to save them. Body's meant to do this, right? And NAD, again, it's kind of like that whole thing. Um, remember, like people said during the pandemic, wearing a mask is like putting up a chain link fence to keep mosquitoes out. This is the opposite. This is the opposite. It's like putting up a chain link fence to let beach balls in. It's not going to fit. It's not going to fit. And if the molecule does not fit, you must acquit. So what does this mean? The NAD is not the bottleneck. You can crank up precursors. But if your mitochondria don't have the right fuel or signaling environment, you won't feel a damn thing. It's placebo. Or as I like to call it, placebo, bro because the bros love this ish. So the real limiting factor is fuels that mitochondria can use. If you want more energy, you want more, we all want more energy, right? You don't throw coenzymes at the wall and hope they stick. You give the mitochondria something they can actually burn for ATP. You knew this was coming. It's where GoBHB comes in. Like, and, and again, not a sales pitch. Don't take it. I don't care. I'm just reading the data and I'm extrapolating what this molecule does. So we've gone into GoBHB. This channel has. It's patented, high quality form of exogenous ketones. It's called beta hydroxybutyrate. It can come in an acid, which is something that is 100% BHB, or it can be attached to a salt, meaning attached to an electrolyte, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and calcium. So a lot of the products out there will be a powder, right? A powder that is a blend of those electrolytes. You're getting electrolytes and people pay a ton of money for electrolytes. What if you get this compound and an electrolyte all in one? Boom. I mean, why would you even take a, an electrolyte packet if you could just take a oh, GoBHB salt? That makes no sense. So here's the thing though. Here's the magic. GoBHB doesn't need to play transporter roulette. It doesn't get blocked at the mitochondrial gate. It goes straight in as fuel. So how does it directly power mitochondria? Let's go BHB. Bypasses glucose dependence. So unlike glucose, which by the way, go BHB has two, provides 250% more energy than glucose. Glucose requires insulin and multiple enzymatic steps to enter the mitochondria. BHB is readily taken up and converted into acetyl-CoA, the direct entry point into the Krebs cycle. This means faster and cleaner ATP production. It produces more energy per unit. So research shows that BHB yields more ATP per molecule than glucose. We went over that 250% or fatty acids, making it a more energy dense fuel. It reduces oxidative stress. Burning glucose can generate excessive Reactive oxygen species, that's ROS. And I actually came out with a product back in 2006 to combat this. You guys might remember, it was called Noxidant to, to combat post-exercise ROS. So BHB metabolism creates fewer ROS, protecting mitochondria from oxidative damage. And it increases mitochondrial biogenesis. BHB acts as a signaling molecule, activates PGC1A, that's a master regulator of mitochondrial growth. More mitochondria equals more cellular engines. So another thing is BHB, BDNF, and cognition. Heard about BDNF, right? Heard about cognition. Tons of studies coming out on cognition and BHB. So here's the deal. It doesn't just fuel muscles. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. This acts as a premium fuel for neurons. 
Even better, it activates pathways that increase brain-derived neurotropic factor. That is the BDNF I was just talking about. The protein that drives learning, memory, and you might hear this on people's podcasts like Huberman, neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. That's the ability to learn new things. Animal studies show ketones increase BDNF expressions in the hippocampus. This improves learning and memory. In humans, ketone supplementation has been shown to improve cognitive performance under stress and fatigue conditions, such as training, a stressful job, school finals, um, a youth athlete playing football, wrestling. All my kids take BHB, not just for this, but here's a whole nother video, concussion protocol. We've gone over this, but I'll go over it every day for the rest of my life. Your brain can't really use glucose as a fuel after you get a concussion but it can utilize BHB. It's a game changer. So instead of just using caffeine, which essentially just blocks adenosine, and then when you stop taking caffeine, when it wears off, the adenosine just flows in and makes you tired, hence the crash. No, it provides cellular energy, provides steady brain fuel, and long-term neuroplastic benefits. Meaning if you take it daily, which everyone should, from man, woman, and child, and elderly, everybody should. So, What about performance? What about recovery? So it's been studied in this. So for endurance, ketones improved endurance performance in elite cyclists by providing an alternative glycogen sparing fuel. For recovery, BHB reduces inflammation post-exercises by inhibiting the NLRP3 inflammasome, a driver of systemic inflammation. So for muscle preservation, and this, there's some great data, I've read new data on this, BHB has anti-catabolic effects, protecting muscle protein from breakdown under stress anti-aging and longevity. These are all things that NAD claim. While NAD claims it's all about longevity, BHB actually has mechanisms that make it work, that back it up. Epigenetic regulation, BHB inhibits histone decetylase, HDACs. I'm not good at words. I can read them. I can't pronounce them. Switching on genes linked to stress, resistance, and longevity. Metabolic flexibility. Heard about this a lot during the ketone diet days. But supplementing BHB trains your body into efficiently switching between fuel sources. So you can go from fat fuel to carb fuel, essentially. And that is indicative of a resilient metabolism. Neuroprotection. By fueling the brain and upregulating BDNF, BHB may help protect against neurodegenerative diseases. So if you're looking at taking one or the other, and I'm not saying do that, go BHB gives you all the benefits of NAD, but it actually gives you the benefits. Basically, it gives you what NAD claims. Direct fuel versus indirect hype. BHB goes straight into the mitochondria. And don't forget the blood-brain barrier. NAD supplements rely on complex pathways and questionable assumptions. Very little data, and the data we've seen, it actually decreased performance in one rat study. Immediate results. So with GoBHB, it's direct. Your body knows what it is. It's bioidentical to what your body produces under stress. It raises in under an hour, near immediate. If you take the L isomer, there's L and D, that's a different video. Man, you are feeling that thing in three to five minutes. NAD pills may not move it at all, may not move that needle at all. So proven benefits, studies, studies, studies. It backs BHB for energy, endurance, cognition, inflammation, longevity pathways. NAD is all theory right now. And I'm not shitting on it. I'll continue to take NAD supplements. I'm not mad at it. But let's be real. GoBHB gives you everything that NAD claims. So if you want to actually fuel your body at the cellular level, if you want to actually give yourself, give your mitochondria some food to power it through the day, stop chasing the dream. Stop chasing the claims. Stop. I mean, look, dude, We need to learn more about NAD. There needs to be more data, but the data we have is not conclusive. They can't do what they promise because here's the deal. I don't, it can't get in there. It's too big. Square peg round hole, guys. So instead, if you want to improve your mitochondrial function, go BHP. It's real clean energy. Fuels your brain, your body, and of course, with the anti-aging effects, your future. So that's what I got. Hopefully that was educational, you guys. Um, what supplements take? I'm going to make it easy. Go on Amazon or Google. Type in Go BHP. Go BHP. I'll also provide a link below. That's all you need to do. 
if the product says BHB or ketone, there's a lot of fake ketones out there. There's one that uses some called 1,3-butendial, which is an alcohol, and there's so much horrible data coming out on this thing. I wouldn't touch 1,3-butendial with a 10-foot pole. Would not do it. Dr. Veach has gone on record as saying nobody should take 1,3-butendial at all. Look, guys, if you want the real deal, if you want to get all these benefits I keep talking about, supplementing regularly with BHB has not only helped me, but help my son who play football and wrestle, help my daughter who's getting college done in three years, power through her studies, has also helped her hormonally. Um, it's helped my wife dramatically. It, it's a life changer. So again, if you're looking at the real deal in actual cellular energy in changing your life, what do I recommend? Go get that BHB. Again, type in Go BHB. It has to be Go BHB with the registered mark. Has to have the logo on. If it doesn't have that, it's fake. And we don't know what the hell that fake stuff is, and they're violating tons of patents. Get something with Go BHB. Take 10 to 20 grams a day. That's right. How do you dose it? I like doing 10 grams pre-workout, 5 grams in the afternoon, 5 grams a little bit later, and then I'll take about 2 to 3 grams before bed because, yes, not only does it help power your workout, but it also will, based on new data in May of this year, it will most likely, based on the data, improve the quality of your sleep. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Mark Lobliner. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, and remember, well, because mitochondrial health, that's not a game.